All right, so that first example, we have a culture of 100 bacteria that's put into a petri dish. The culture doubles every hour. Predict when the number of bacteria will be 350,000. Okay, so we have done this model before. We've talked about doubling. So I'm going to write the model to begin with. The population at some time t is equal to the initial amount, 100 bacteria. It is doubling every hour, so that's times 2 to the t. And it's every hour, so t is going to be in hours when we get down to the very end. So that's our model. The way that we've used this before is just to plug in a time to find out how much will be there. Well, this time it says predict when, so we're looking for T, when will this population be 350,000 bacteria? So we set the model equal to 350,000 and we're trying to solve for T. Well, we divide both sides by 100. Well, guess what? When you got zeros like this, dividing by 100 just cancels two zeros. <clears throat> so we have uh, 3,500 is equal to 2 to the t. This is why I wanted you to do that 10 marks on logarithms because we need to be back in the swing of solving these equations. We need to write this in log form. Log, the base is the same as the base of the exponential, so the log base 2 of 3,500 is equal to t. Well, since this is a real-life application problem, I want to know, well, what is that equivalent to? And several people ask me, well, how do I do that? Remember, this is change of base. It's the log of the big number. Now, when I say big number, I don't mean just the two of those numbers that's bigger. I mean the not the base, not the subscript, um, the regular size font. I'm actually talking about its font size when I say bigger, not its magnitude. <clears throat> Divided by the log of the base. So it will take approximately 11.773 hours for this population or this bacteria to reach 350,000 which really when you think about it is not a very long time for 100 bacteria to turn into 350,000 bacteria less than 12 hours kind of scary kind of scary that's true but it also, uh, I don't know how strong this bacteria is. It could just take one. Exactly. Exactly. Okay, so, any questions so far? Let's look at a half-life problem. Okay, suppose that the half-life of a certain radioactive substance is 20 days, and there are 5 grams present initially. Find the time when there will be 1 gram of the substance remaining. So again, I'm going to start by setting up my model. The population at some time t is equal to the initial amount, 5 grams, times, this is half-life, so the base is 1 half, to the t divided by, remember we had to divide these by the length of the half-life, and that is in days. Okay, that is in days. So just make sure I'm emphasizing the units because this was a problem on one of the quizzes that we took. We forgot the units. Okay. Um, so that's in days. So find the time when there will be one gram of the substance remaining. So we want to set this equal to one. We're looking for T. So we begin by dividing by five. We have one fifth is equal to one half to the t over 20. We can't deal with that divided by 20 until we've got the exponent, uh, until we've got the variable out of the exponent, which takes writing in log form. The base of the exponential is the same as the base of the logarithm. The variable comes out of the exponent, or out of, gets unstuck. It's not very mathematical, but it might help you remember what happens. Then we can multiply both sides by 20. Okay, and that 20 doesn't change the numbers inside the logarithm, it's just on the outside. So 20 times the log of 1 fifth 
divided by the log of one half or 0.5. Here's an example of where the big number is not bigger than the base. One fifth is smaller than one half, but it's where it's at is what matters. 46.439 is equal to t, and that is in days. Okay. Now, I am big on making sure that this makes sense. Okay, this is talking about half-life. I think these are some of the easiest problems to make sure that they make sense. If we start with five grams after 20 days, after one half-life, how much should we have? What does half-life mean? You got half of what you started with. So we start with five. After 20 days, how much should we have? 2.5. Okay, well, we want to know when there's one. Well, what's half of 2.5? 1.25, so we're still not there. That's 40 days. We've got to go a little bit beyond 40 days because then half of 1.25 um, is what, like 0.625? Okay, something like that. Um, so that's too much. We don't need to go a whole nother half-life, but we just need to go a little bit beyond two half-lives, which would be a little bit past 40 days. So make sure that it makes sense. Okay, you can kind of do that with some of the doubling problems too. Now the other one was really big, um, but this one's pretty manageable to just stop and make sure that it makes sense. All right, now here is a new type of problem that we've got. Um, you will always be given this formula, okay? I will not give you the other formulas, but you will always be given this formula. Newton's law of cooling. Now there's an explanation of it on page 326 of your textbook. I don't want you to turn there right now, but some of you I know are curious people. So if you got some free time, you can look at that later on. Um, but Newton came up with a lot of stuff in physics and calculus, and um, you know, some people say that he created calculus. But anyways, he probably got that he was the whole gravity apple falling out of the tree thing. But he did a lot of other stuff too. One of those things is talking about the uh, law of cooling um, the temperature of an item has to do with the temperature of its surroundings, uh, its initial temperature, and all this different stuff. Um, so, like I said, you'll always be given this formula, but you got to remember what the pieces are. So, T sub M is the temperature of the surrounding medium. What is your object in? T sub zero is your initial temperature of the object. Uh, there's T sub M again. K is going to be a constant. We're going to be figuring out what K is. Um, e is, you know, what our calculator is the base E, and then T is also an unknown. So let's look at doing a problem here with Newton's law of cooling. We've got a hard-boiled egg that starts at a temperature of 96 degrees Celsius. It is placed in 16 degrees Celsius water to cool. Four minutes later, the temperature of the egg is 45 degrees Celsius. Use Newton's law of cooling to determine when the egg will be 20 degrees Celsius. So, these are kind of lengthy problems. I'm going to go ahead and warn you ahead of time. Okay, we're going to go through this process twice. The first time, we got to figure out what K is. Once we know what K is, then we'll go through and we will figure out uh, the last question. When will the egg be 20 degrees Celsius? All right, so let's go through here. <clears throat> uh, let's identify what our variables are. 96 degrees Celsius is the initial temperature of the object. 16 degrees Celsius is the temperature of the medium. Four minutes later, the egg is 45 degrees Celsius. That is T of 4 is 45 degrees Celsius. And then that 20 degrees Celsius we're going to use with our second part, but that's T of little t, the temperature at some time. We don't know the time because we're trying to figure out when is 20 degrees Celsius. All right, so let's set this up. Um, we've got 45 degrees is equal to the temperature, I don't want to mess anything up, the temperature of the medium plus the initial temperature minus the temperature of the medium times E to the negative K times T in this case is 4. 
because I plugged in the specific temperature at time 4. So our only unknown variable here is K, and that's what we're going to start solving for. Alright, so if we are solving this, we need to begin by subtracting 16 from both sides. 45 minus 16 is 29. Wait, 29? Yeah, okay. Second guessing myself there. Okay, um, 96 minus 16 is 80. So we've got 80e to the negative 4k. I'm going kind of slow on this. <clears throat> Make sure everybody follows me. Divide by 80. 29 over 80 is not a nice number, so I'm just going to leave it the way it is. Okay, we are solving for k. k is in the exponent, so we need to write this in logarithmic form. The base was e, so we can use the natural log. The natural log of 29 over 80 is equal to negative 4k. And then we can divide both sides by negative 4. Now, that is going to be a nasty decimal number. So let me show you what I want you to do with that. Okay, I do want you to type it in your calculator. Natural log 29 over 80. Make sure you close the parentheses. Divided by negative 4. Okay, press enter. There's our value of k. I do not want you to round this. We're going to use it here in a minute, but I don't want you to round it. So if, have you ever wondered what this STO with the arrow button is beside the 1? Okay. This is going to allow you to store values in your calculator under a variable. So um, immediately after you press enter, press the STO with the arrow button. And then since it's standing for k, let's Let's store it as K. So press alpha in the left parenthesis there, okay, and press enter, and it will store, your calculator has now stored that number as the variable K. That's why if you've ever tried to type in an equation with an X in there and press enter and it gives you a number and you're like, but Ms. Redmond, this is not the right answer, well, that's because your calculator is just using some number that's been put in as X. It's just plugging it in. It's not actually solving it. Okay, that's why that's happening. Okay, so we're not finished yet. Okay, that was not that was not the question. The question was determine when the egg will be 20 degrees Celsius. <clears throat> so part two of the question is when is the equation equal to 20? Okay, everything else is still the same. The temperature of the medium is still 16 degrees. The original minus the medium is still 80. And I'm going to, I'm going to leave K as a variable, but realize that we just solved for it. So we don't have two variables here. Um, I'm just not rounding that off and typing and writing it into my equation. Okay. So solve it the exact same way. Subtract 16. This time we get 4 is equal to 80 e to the negative K T. Divide by 80. Uh, just because 4 over 80 does reduce, I am going to reduce that to 1 over 20. We're solving for t. It's stuck in that exponent. So again, we need log form. The natural log of 1 over 20 is equal to negative kt. So then we can divide by negative k. So I can go to my calculator and type in the natural log of 1 over 20, close my parentheses, divided by negative k, and it will give me the correct answer, 11.809 minutes is approximately how long it takes for the egg to reach 20 degrees Celsius.
Okay, it took four degrees for it to reach 45, or four minutes, excuse me, to reach 45 degrees, so it makes sense.